Good morning, Internet. Yashoda here with West Coast Yoga. Today I'm in beautiful Seattle, and I'd like to speak a few words about Yuga Dharma. From the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, we learn about the four yugas, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapar Yuga, and Kali Yuga. In the 11th canto, the nine sons of Lord Rishabdev, the Yogendras, instruct King Nimi about the forms of religion for different ages, as well as the incarnations of the Lord who appear. Beginning in Satya Yuga, which is the most pure age, the residents live for 100,000 years. In the Genesis chapter of the Bible, we hear these extraordinary descriptions of people living for a long time. Similar concept. The residents of Satya Yuga here on earth live for a duration of 100,000 years. And so their prescribed form of meditation or their prescribed form of religion is a silent meditation. They sit down for maybe 60,000 years in meditation and then the balance of their lives is spent, you could say, in perfection. The form of the Lord who appears in Satya Yuga is whitish. His name is Hunksa and he teaches the residents how to perform their meditation. In the following age, Treta Yuga, vice has been introduced and now you have the Varnashram system. The incarnation for the Treta Yuga is named Yajna. In fact, Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita references Yajna in the chapter 3. He says, Yajnartat Kamano Yatra. Uh, duty for Yajna has to be performed. It's always Krishna's custom to allude to the previous authority. He talks about Asita, Devala, Vyas, all these sages of authority. Similarly, Krishna is alluding to the Yuga avatar of Treta Yuga, Yajna. And the form of religion which is prescribed is elaborate sacrifice. You have to collect all these different paraphernalia, pure articles, and offer them as a sacrifice to the Lord. In the following age, Tvapar, Vice has increased substantially. There's a lot of strife. As Prabhupada describes previously, demons and devotees would live on different planets. And then with the, tr the march of time, the progress of time, oh, now they're living in different continents. Same planet, different continents. And then time continues. We're living in the same continent, same country. And eventually, uh, same country... <laughs> Same family, same body. So the situation is so dire in the Kali Yuga. The demon and the devotee are in the same body. And we don't know when we wake up in the morning, are we going to get the demon? Or are we going to get the devotee? So in this way, in Dvapar Yuga, with the increase of vice, the method of religion has been made even more, you could say, accessible or simplified. The Lord is worshipped with elaborate prayers. He's worshipped as the ideal king. And of course, Krishna himself is the Yuga avatar. And you see this process typified from devotees like the, um, Queen Kunti. Queen Kunti's prayers are extensive and very ecstatic. She's offering these beautiful prayers to the Lord as the ideal prince, ideal king, etc. Finally, in the Kali Yuga, the form of religion, what Lord Chaitanya is presenting, he is preaching to the faithless. The modern audience has no appetite for rules and regulations prescribed in the Vedas. People think that the Vedas are some kind of a mythology, tall tale. They have no time for yam niyam, they just want asan. No time for restrictions and rules. They haven't even heard of brahmachari ashram. Uh, there's no scope to follow the brahmachari lifestyle. They haven't even heard of it. So in the modern age, the avatar is Gora, and the method of religion is congregational chanting. Sometimes Prabhupada would say that the Yuga Dharma is chanting Hare Krishna, and chanting Japa would satisfy that need. Other times, Prabhupada would say the Yuga Dharma is Nagar Kirtan, street chanting, and sometimes Prabhupada would explain the Yuga Dharma is going door to door, explaining the science of God consciousness. So regardless of how you interpret the instruction, 
glorifying the Lord, Sankirtan, is the form of religion and it takes different forms. So we can understand that every age has a prescribed method. It's not that we're forlorn, we're lost, we have no direction. All the previous acharyas have chalked out the clear path. And if we simply follow in their footsteps, as described in the Nectar of Instruction, there are all these different methods for advancement, accepting what is favorable, uh, rejecting non-devotee association, being enthusiastic, being patient. It's not enough just to be enthusiastic. We have to, we have to also be patient. Um, living simply, not endeavoring for too many material things. In this way, we can prosecute the modern system of religion. And all of the discord in society is due to a lack of training. Arjuna very clearly had a vision of the future. He said that the system of training is going to deteriorate with the progress of time. As the older generation passes on, many of the younger folks do not inherit the good training. And to increase the problem, women are having, um, let's say, unprotected relations. They're producing a population that is on the level of cats and dogs. And this Varna Sankar, this unwanted population, they don't perform the Pinda offering for the ancestors. They don't perform all the regulatory rules and prescriptions. So each generation in turn becomes contaminated and you more or less get hell on earth. Arjuna knew that all of these things are going to pass and he had great anxiety on it. Similarly, Srila Vyasadev had an anxiety that the future uh, people of Kali Yuga will be very degraded. Manda sumanda matayo manda bhagya. Short-lived, quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, always disturbed. We have many, many faults, an ocean of faults. But inside of this ocean of faults, there is a second ocean that is an ocean of good fortune. As it turns out, even the residents of Satya Yuga, even the demigods, are wishing to take birth in the Kali Yuga because in a very short duration, maybe 100 years, we have an opportunity to advance ourselves. All of the pains and pleasures of this world we're acutely aware of give us an incentive to cry out to the Lord with feeling. Every time we have some material misery, what Prabhupada calls pin, pinprick. There are many pinpricks in society. These things give us an incentive to surrender. And now we're becoming very much serious about spiritual life. So that in 100 years, the short duration of time, we can make a great leap of advancement in spiritual life. Other places are not so well suited for spiritual advancement. The Bhagavatam explains that in Jambudweep, there are all these different regions and tracts of land where people live, humans. But only in the Bharat Varsha, this particular um, tract of land, island, you can call it, only in Bharat Varsha, Earth, is spiritual life, let's say, most expedient. You will not find expedient spiritual life on the heavenly planets. Similarly, the hellish planets are so distracting, it's not very favorable for expedient spiritual life. But Bharat Varsha and the Kali Yuga is the ideal environment. And although we have to tolerate pains and pleasures by the Lord's mercy, we have good association. We have the sacred Ganges. We have Vrindavan Dham, Mayapur Dham, Tulsi Devi, Srimad Bhagavatam, previous Acharyas. All these favorable uh, elements are making the path very accessible. We simply have to walk the path. And if we fail in our effort, Arjuna was concerned. He said, what if I fail? I take up this discipline, spiritual discipline. And if I fail, I'm like a cloud, a riven cloud which has no place. It simply dissolves. The Christian's reply was, actually, a person who fails at spiritual life is celebrated in human society. We celebrate the failures. If you fail after a little practice, then in your next life you'll have a human body and you'll be born in what's called uh, Sukriti. You'll be born in a family of pious people, generally wealthy people. One of the problems of the Western birth is that we get very bored. Mommy, mommy, take me to the mall. I want to rent a DVD. I want to do this and that, play video games. We have so much free time because of our Western birth. We're finding so many distractions, so many streaming services. This is called Sukriti. 
we have good opportunity for God consciousness from an early age. That's if you fall down after a brief practice. What about the heavy hitters? Those who practice for 20, 30 years and then some weird karma comes up and they have to start over. First of all, Krishna says that this birth is very rare. And Srila Prabhupada in the purport puts himself and his spiritual master in this category that those who practice for a long time in their next life, they take a birth in a family where God consciousness is very prevalent. From the very early age, they take a name like Govinda. Who gets born with a name like Govinda? That's not common. And God consciousness comes even if it's not sought after from a very early age. This is the environment of many of our students in Krishna consciousness. And it is my good fortune that I had a similar exposure. So such a soul from an early age is able to rekindle whatever divine consciousness was cultivated in a previous life. And now they can continue a sincere endeavor. So thank you for your kind attention. See you next time. Hare Krishna.